Hi, it's Lael from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Um, sorry, it's been a while. I've been a bit sick. I'm okay now. And as you will see, this isn't the stable I'm in. No, I've moved the studio into the warm until the spring. I normally do that, but uh, this year I was going to brave it out, but I don't think I can. So this isn't where I normally paint in the, in, in the winter. I, I won't tell you which room I'm actually painting in, but we might need a new living room carpet, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, what's what's going on here? This was a vintage piece that I just bought at auction and I have painted it purple only because there's quite a lot to do and if I'm truly honest, I had done it a different colour first and I didn't really like it and I'd already started the video so <laughs> we're doing this again. <laughs> so now it's purple. Uh, this is a really exciting one because the lovely IOD sisters have sent me some products to play with and today I'm going to be using uh, now, I think it's called La Campagne, La Campagne, as in campaign, but, and I'm saying that because it sounds like the end of champagne. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but it could be La Campagne. Um, but it's the one with, it's got chickens and florals, and I think it would make a sort of toile scene, or when I say I think, that's what we're going to try and attempt to do. This purple was a mix of Annie Sloan's Capri Pink and um, Oxford Navy. That's what gave me this plum. Yeah, not pink, plum. And the colours I've mixed up to go with it are a sort of dusky sort of rose sort of colour, which is this, and that's a little bit of Capri Pink and a little tiny, there's something in my paint, yeah, and see I'm mucky already, and a little bit of cocoa, about half and half to mix this. I've got another colour here, which is just this colour with a little bit of old ochre in it and I'm going to be, don't worry, I mean I haven't, you know, the whole piece isn't going to be purple, the majority of it is actually going to be duck egg blue. So these are my sort of choice of colours and there could be a little bit of gold or what did I think, I sat it down somewhere, bronze possibly. A little bit of something, Matty said that would be a shocker if there wasn't. So let's have a wee look at this and see what I've been saying. I they asked me what I wanted and so I've, I've, I thought I'd have a play around with the stamps because I love stamps. So let's have a look. So in this one you get some really pretty ones, big rooster and a cow, some roses. Do you know what, do you know what drew me to this one? It was actually the roses and the strawberries and the sort of berries and these and hang on, I think it'll show you better if I do this and these florals because these florals to somebody that does furniture art can be used over and over and over again but i think i'm going to be a bit cheeky and put the chicken in there anyway we'll see how it goes now what am i going to do i think first of all what i'm going to do is try and eradicate with some kind of blend along the front i'm only going to work on the front today the the top won't be stamped and I don't know whether the sides will. You don't want too much going on in the front and, you know, so sometimes it's good to leave. We'll see how, I'm not quite sure. What I'm trying to say is this, is we're just going to be working on the front. So it's just going to be a whole front thing we're doing. So let me just get started. I'm, you're going to need some sort of mat. Um, I'm just going to promote everybody tonight. If you haven't bought one already, you know how I always use the plastics or the backing cards of these or you name it, I use them for mixing. I went and bought, purchased myself a lovely Annie Sloan mixing mat. And you know what? It's so good. And it just whee, whee, wash it and you can just, and, it, and it's really good because now I don't have a hundred million things sitting around with bits of paint on. <laughs> so I'm going to stick that under there. And I'm just going to have a wee play about because I'm in such bammy heat because I've got a lovely wood burning stove just there. Um, I'm going to be putting a little bit of water on it. I'll still be catching it. I've put waterproof under these these um, sheets that I've got down um, to catch any spills. But I'm just going to have a play about with the blend on the front and you can watch me have a wee play about with that. And then um, I'll go off camera, let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll start doing some of the fun parts. So using the colours I said um how am i gonna because i'm trying to work out the when you're doing something that's a sort of all over stampy thing it's quite good if you get perspective you know what's your sizes where are they going to be so that you can put kind of blend as, oh that chicken's not as big as i thought it was good i thought it was going to be massive 
So I'm wanting to kind of put my roses up in the corners, definitely, and maybe down here. So I'm wanting some more pinks down here than I'm wanting the blues. My chicken and whatever else goes with my chicken. I think I'll fill in these panels last with what I'm going to do. I might just do the sort of, yeah. Okay, right. So I've got a lovely blending brush. I've got some water. This has had two solid coats. Um, the last coat wasn't that long ago, but uh, it's dry. Um, because I said the log burner there is keeping it nice and warm. So I'm just going to have a wee sort of play around on this mat with some of the paint here. And let's see what we can do. So I'll just kind of get it flat. It's quite good this because the paint kind of grip. I'm going to turn it over. It's a wee bit dry. Right. Um, so I'm going to have some of this. But I'm just softening it up a bit. Just making it a little bit looser. Easier to work with. Yeah. I think so. Right, and so where did we think the kind of roses were going to be? And this is where you're just going to have to kind of like trust your sort of process on this. I mean, that's kind of tricky, I guess. And then I'm going to dip into this, the lighter one. Give it a skoosh. I can add as much water as I wish. Now... I want to kind of still keep some of the purples, so I'm not going to go too mad on that. Let's work on this area here. So I think I'm going to kind of start introducing my blue now, which is the duck egg blue. Let's try and see what we can do here, putting this together. So your blue is kind of going to maybe set the scene a bit. Let's go and mix that over. I'm not looking for a blendy blend. I'm just looking for a sort of throw it all together blend and see what sticks kind of blend. I'm quite liking that up there, so I'm not going to touch it. Um, maybe some blues up in here. And then back to maybe some of this lighter pink here. And some of this dusky pink said linen beside it. Give it an old skish. Um, it's kind of guesswork if you're using the stamp because you don't really know what you're going to end up with. Yeah, I'm quite, I've kind of eradicated quite a lot of the purple actually. Try and bring in more blues here. Now, what I forgot to tell you was these centre panels and this bottom panel here, I put a tiny, tiny little bit of a uh, salt wash in it. I've remembered the name now, Martin. Earlier on, I said to Martin Rock Salt. <laughs> I mean, he did look at me as if I'd, yeah. So, I hope everybody's been doing okay since I've not been, been on. I just, it was one of those things. I think what I'm going to do is, I'm now going to introduce another element to this. And I'm going to get a wee a cloth and see if I can do a wee bit. I mean, Martin. <laughs> yeah, Martin, uh-huh. Frottage. I can't see it like you, Martin. No. Yeah. I'm quite I'm quite liking that, but I think I would like a little bit more of the sort of blues. And this is where, I mean, you're probably going to think, oh, God, get on with it. But this is the bit that takes time. If you want to have something that you... And you can wipe some of it away at some parts. Reveal some of that purple. Yeah. I'm quite liking that. I like this part here. I wish this part looked like that part. I think it needs a bit more something. Maybe a bit of this. Maybe frame that out a bit more. Yeah. 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 I'm just playing around with the colours and, you know, and as you can see, I've kept the handles on. I'm going to put knobs on it as well up above it because I like... I like um, handles. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to come back to this middle panel when I'm off camera because it's not exactly, it's not doing what I'm wanting it to do right now. I think that's the problem. I think I've applied too much paint on this section here.
So you, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just I'm dipping my brush in some, whoop, and uh, just using all the colours at once and making them lie down beside each other before we kind of go in with what we're going to do next, which is I might actually do a wee bit of a wash over the top of this as well. Martin will never get to his bed tonight. <laughs> I didn't even tell him this would be quick. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, you think is you can paint till all hours now that I have that I'm indoors. It was the right thing to do, Mark. Was just saying I, I was just getting too many things wrong, just one after the other, and I think some of it was to do with just just the general sort of uh, you know the cold and just always working in the cold all the time, and yeah. But I am fully fully functioning again so yeah I'm liking this now I'm liking this now I quite like those three panels of the three together and I love up here I'm scared I mess it up so I'm just going to do something like this there this part here love this part here quite like this part here don't like so much and this is why I'm saying to you you know you just have to kind of trust your process here because you're probably thinking you don't like any of it <laughs> uh, it will all come good in the end I promise it just looks like a mess right now Sometimes it looks like I've never held a paintbrush. After the thing I had, I thought maybe I wouldn't be able to pick up a paintbrush. I had this thing where it, I had to go for all these different brain scans. <laughs> and my mum was concerned because she was she was unclear whether they'd find a brain. <laughs> but they did, and it was all good. Martin was awful frightened. Because uh, they thought it was a stroke, but it, it wasn't a stroke. So... There we go. I'm like so. I'm not going to bore you with any more of these details right now because. Oh, sorry, Matt said to actually tell you what was wrong with me. No, uh, yeah, what actually? I was dying. No, it was. Um, it wasn't a stroke. It was a particular virus that affects the pathways in the brain, and it affected my like my mobility and I was feeling sick because the world was moving around and I wasn't and uh oh it was terrible but oh after spending time in hospital that's all i was can't, can't wait to get back out it was like getting out of prison and the people there were the nurses and the staff and everything were really nice and they were really kind to me and everything and they thought it was all very entertaining that i made a living from from painting things on furniture and they until i showed them the pictures and then and, and 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 then they were like wow well, you really do paint things on furniture i think they thought i was being kind of funny at the time but um yeah so that was my time in hospital and i had this crazy i mean i'm not even going to tell you the story i had this crazy woman in the bed beside me crazy like crazy crazy because i pulled my curtain around my bed because the light was hurting my eyes um because they also thought it was meningitis but it wasn't um yeah, and she, she didn't like the curtain being pulled, and so she really had an issue with me that I pulled the curtain. <laughs> she ended up being moved. So, yeah, anyway, for those that have never watched me paint furniture before, I'm sorry, you're getting a whole diatribe of what happened while I was in the hospital. But for those that know me, know that I digress quite a lot. Well, it explains where I'm trying to explain where I've been and what I've been actually doing. And if I could have painted and I could have done a video, I, I really would have. But to be honest with you, I, when I came out of hospital, I really didn't want to paint furniture because I couldn't have painted it if I tried. And goodness knows what kind of job you were going to get as well. Um, you think sometimes it's bad now. It could have been way worse if I'd tried to pick up a paintbrush then. But I've got this thing, um, it's kind of, it's um, like kind of physio for your vestibular. I can't, is it vestibular nerve? I don't know. Are there any doctors out there? I'm sure they don't watch me, but it was something... This physio that I've got to do where I've got to flood my senses with um, these exercises and that was all very entertaining. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go off just now and I'm just going to finish this front because I'm starting to quite like it and I think um, I'm just going to have a wee play about with it. But you you, you get the sort of general gist. I don't want to labour on this too long. If not that, um, you know, I want you to get the full boon of me putting the stamps on. Okay. Okay, so this is dry enough to stamp on and I've cut the stamps out 
um i've got mark to cut them out they're still on the plastic mount just so i can i've got more pressure to to do it with um what to say about them these stamps when you get iod stamps i'm sure you've had them before but if you haven't had iod stamps give them a wee sand this way this way and this way just with a, a fine grit sandpaper just to condition them so that they've got more tooth for when they apply them to the surface what else do i do when i'm using stamps so there's a set like this i tend to put them into sets so the florals will be in a set the chickens will be in a set the cows will be in a set but these little fellas here I'll show you on here. I just kept all the little chickens together. Well, Martin kept all the chickens together because if these go into my stamp drawers over in the stable, they well, never they'll, they'll, they'll never they'll never be found again because all the little ones and all the stamps, I try and keep them. I mean, you should see it. I try and keep the drawers for the stamps, but I have so many now that it's just Shangri-La. And I tend to use the same ones nearly all the time. So all the Christmassy festive ones and things with pumpkins and all sorts of things, seahorses, you name it, are all in different drawers, all jumbled there together. I mean, you'd be horrified if you saw it. Um, so, yeah. Yes. Thousands of pounds worth of stamps. <laughs> said thousands of pounds worth of stamps. Uh, yeah. So I, I do look after them. I, I, I That's one thing I do. I mean, I really do look after my stamps because the stamps are a lot of what i do with furniture and what i tend to do is you can buy stamp cleaner if you use ink and um if you're rolling them with paint the best thing to do is just have a sort of basin with water and stick them straight into the basin of the water so that the paint's not hardening on them take them over and just use a, a kind of light scrubbing brush nothing really heavy or hard nothing metal don't put them in boiling water all these kind of things you just wash them and they're fine and i mean some of my stamps i've had for so long now and they're still going strong one in particular set gets an absolute hammer in the, the, the bohemian stamps. <laughs> they're they're not looking their best. Um, but everything else, yeah, you just look after them. But as I said, they're all piled together and there's one drawer for all the big flowers because they don't fit in the top drawer. It's just, a, I, it's my system. Right, so I'm going to start stamping now and I have decided I am probably going to first put my glasses on because that might help. Martin said, why, are this, why is there paint on these already? Because I touched my hands on me and I gave him the sand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. So I'm going to start with this rose. Now, I will say buckle in. I'll try not to make this too long-winded, but you know how I sometimes can get a little bit carried away. I did have ink a minute ago, but I don't know what I've done with it. Oh, it wasn't this one. It must, maybe it was this one. Right. Oh. So I'm looking for a funky twirl effect is what I'm going for. So let's see. But I want positioning in these sorts of things is kind of key. I really want to butt that up against there. Now I'm going across multiple surfaces because this part here is higher than this middle part. So I'm stamping the middle part first because it's all on the reasonable flat. It's going to be really fun when I get to this side because this, these middle panels, which I've textured, but I was looking for a little bit. Now, that's the thing about stamps. You know, I love this sort of stamped look. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be what you're looking for. Just make sure you touch all areas. And that's why sometimes keeping the backing on is quite a good thing. I don't always do that. It depends. It's a great big one that I want to keep intact, I do, but generally I just, because I, I never put them on as a whole, so I don't use the mount very often. I think I'm going to be quite happy with this when I take it off. So that's my first one. And I haven't quite made up my mind where I'm going to start to build up some colour in here. I think I probably will. But let's get a few on first before I decide what I'm doing. Now I thought Mr. Checking, I want him a bit. Here. So I'm just going to stamp him and pop him on. I think he's a rooster, actually. <laughs> we had a rooster called Mr. Pickles. You should ask Martin about Mr. Pickles. Mr. Pickles was the most vicious rooster. Um, he was absolutely, he was crazy. He just attacked you every time he saw you. And uh, what, 
he, he was wired wrong, Martin said. One day he ran away and was down the track and a lot of walkers, ramblers, go out walking down there. And I said, we can't leave him down there. And Martin said, oh, it'll be a good surprise for those out walking. <laughs> it took me and my older son, who has actually got like just finished um, an HND in animal care. And he was really like sympathetic to the whole Mr. Pink Pickles being down the road. So we, we, we took some grain and we... We, we, some welding gloves. Um, some, my son had a pair of welding gloves and a welding mask on. I didn't have anything. I was I was walking in front with the green. But the really funny bit was every two minutes he'd turn around to attack my son. It was it took us ages to get him back into the garden and he's run. We had to extend the run because we couldn't keep him. Our hands right our hands were free range, but the rooster just wasn't. So he had his great big enclosure with a great big run because we thought it was cool to keep him, you know, kind of like. In a pen, so he. But then one day he, one day he died. <laughs> Poor Mr. Pickles. Mr. Pickles. And that's going to go there. Now, what I'm thinking at this point is, is he kind of straight, Martin? You're not keeping me right in the straight things. I want to have. I want to have the. See, this is where he said, "Where did all the pink paint come from?" I want to have something kind of coming off there like that. So I'm just gonna. Kind of judge where I want it, and then before I stamp any more of this, I'll uh, show you what my intentions are. It's actually a bouquet. This I'm not putting it on like a bouquet. Let's see if I can just bypass the bouquet part. If I do this, I can. I can. I'd have to do it that way. I don't want this part in. So, oh, it's in. Oh well, I've committed now. It is so hot in here. I've gone from the sublime to the ridiculous. It's practically Bahamas heat. Oh. I can just give that a wee kick underneath. Just check I've touched all the parts. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're pretty good at that. Now, that's all I'm going to do at the moment just to keep... Hmm. Let me put that there. Uh, right, so down here I have the original purple that I used. I've added a little bit of water to it and I've put a little bit of the duck egg blue in it to make a sort of different purple. But I really want it more of a sort of wash. Um, so let's see if this is maybe... I don't want it too dark. So I am think I'm just going to kind of do this and I'm just going to stamp back over the top of it but I might be a little bit cheeky and stamp back over it in a different colour will I will I not I don't know um so I'm just going to do something like this on the roses and where can I do purple now stuff so you see what I'm doing I'm just kind of I'm not picking I'm not going to paint all of it in um, I think I'll do this purple here, and maybe some of these fancy feathers purple. I don't want to stamp over the top of them. You can see I'm not, I'm not trying to paint it in. I'm just when I go back over the top of it with my stamp. Purple here, and then maybe what I'll do is, I didn't in my infinite wisdom. Didn't Martin? Sorry, I'm gonna have to go behind you just to get another brush. I need another brush, sorry. Try this one here. Just going to do the same with the duck egg blue. Um, might kind of disappear, let's see. Just pick out some parts there. Nothing fancy, just give them a little bit of zhuzh. To make sure that you have to make sure your paint's quite watery to do this, unless you're painting it in solidly. So as you can see, I'm not I'm not choosing to paint the whole thing in, just 
just give them a little bit of something. Yeah. Um, I think really I could introduce maybe the pink into him. So it's just the same colours that I did the blend with, and I'm just choosing. That's why I'm saying it can depends where you're your sort of blend of what sort of kind of colours you want to add. I think I'm going to do something like that because it's going to be stamped over anyway. Just a suggestion. Pink. And um, I think I'll do some of these down here. So I'm going to go away and... What's my plan? <laughs> Did I say what my plan was? I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, I don't think I... I think this is my plan. I, I was saying, you know, about the... I don't think I was saying anything, was I? Oh, I don't know. No, this is my plan. I'm sticking to it. I'm going to paint all these in. Um, oh, I know what I was saying. My plan is to just stamp the whole lot. So next time you see it, the whole front will be stamped and then we'll do a little bit more of this hand painting in. But you, you get the gist. Yeah? Okay, so I've done what I said I was going to do. I've been away and I've stamped it all and I've painted it. Now, at the moment, it just looks like a bit of a hot mess. I'm going to bring it to life. Now, I'd been pondering putting gold over it. I wasn't sure, uh, but I wanted something a little bit more to make it pop. And it was Martin that said, I'll run over to the stable and have a look at all your colours of ink. So he brought me loads back, but in it, it was one called Black Cherry. So with the Black Cherry, I'm going to go over this. So... It's the same deal as you did the first time before you painted it out. Now you're going to get a little bit of a sort of double negative, a bit of a shadow in using this, but it actually, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't detract from the overall look. So I'm going back in here with my strawberry bush, strawberry branch, strawberry yep. thing. But I'm trying to, I know it's a stamp. <laughs> I'm not. I know it's a stab. This I'm trying to think what this is called. A strawberry bow. I don't know. A straw. It's the strawberry one, right? So I'm gonna put that on there. Yeah. And this is how that looks. But with this one here, what I did was I just ignored. I didn't stamp the bow part, and I joined it up on there. I'll show you all the mixes and matches I've done as I go along because this stamp is a really good one and i'm going to show you why in a minute once i've done a little bit more of this because as per usual i normally do the other side off camera just to kind of get a feel for where i'm going before i show you what what to do so i haven't stamped the bow but i need to kind of line this up and this is the bit that takes a little bit of sometimes i kind of shift on it and that doesn't help it sort of shadowing um, I don't want to push down on those branches in case there's any ink left on it. So you just go around and round and round, pushing down on the whole thing. And voila! Now we'll do the cow next, which I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what I thought it was. I <laughs> well, <I'm down. laughs> no, I'm not going to tell them, Martin. I said to Martin earlier, I didn't have my glasses on. I said, why is there a kangaroo? <laughs> it's like the cabbages on the, the, the Queen of the Nile all over again. Right, okay. So, get it kind of lined up and do this. Now, I'm going to show you the next thing of how I put together the sort of branches. And the way I'm going to show you that is by showing you what I've done on the other side so that it makes sense to you. Because it's all in how you put all these things together. Right, that's my coup done. Or my kangaroo or whatever. Right, so you can see this here and you can see that's that, that from here, these two parts I've done. If you Get Martin to have a look down this side, you will see that I have, I'm pulling my big heads in the way, how it looks. I mean, it. these here are what I'm talking about, about mixing them together. I've made the florals go round it and grow up it and over it and round here. 
ignore this little blue part here i just i was just playing around with an accent color so i'm going to show you that and do it all on this door you haven't missed anything i'm going to be showing you all on this side so i'll go back to this one um and i'll show you how like for example here here is uh, is it this no there's there's ones that all these ones here this one this one oh no that not the chicken uh, this one and this one all can make a full like bow together so this one here is obviously this one here so i'll show you this one next and i'll show you what i did to just make it all work so um this is where it gets a bit tricky because i have to work out where i've been previously it helps if i put it on the right way so i mean i'm not i'm not worrying about it there we go So I'm still stamping away. Um, I was doing up there a minute ago, but my mic died um, and I was prattling away for about five minutes um, until we realised that it died. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to show you down here. What I was trying to say was you can piece it all together. So if you put this one in here like that, um, what you can do is um let me see it's kind of sometimes hard to identify which one you used as you go along um when you do it this way but you just have to be a little bit patient and i think all i used of this part was just the rose part i just broke it into i've just that's the good thing about stamps you don't have to use the whole thing um just you know when you're stamping you don't need to be super careful as well either about masking and doing all that you just you know just you, you're here to have fun and it shouldn't be stressful it's just you know it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be perfect Martin saying it just has to be when I look at my finisher at the end I, 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 I think it's perfect but you know I understand that people if you strive for that sort of it's got to be perfect you, you just, you're never going to get it the way you want it because I can look at my furniture and I can see all the little pieces and parts. But then I think that's what makes them unique. It's hand stamped with quite a lot of effort. So, you know, the customer that buys it will appreciate it for what it is. They won't see the flaws that we all see. Now, I put my little bird in there as well, my little chicken. Although I told Martin it was a turkey. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. I find a struggle to identify ordinary farm animals. And the thing is, I, I love chickens. I had chickens for ages. I had chickens and my favourite chicken was called Vanessa. Her, her name was Vanessa Lorraine. Um, and we called her Vanny. And she used to come into the house and do all sorts of things. And she used to drink coffee out your cup. I'm sure that the chicken lovers out there are going, oh, that's really bad, but she didn't do it very often. But yeah, and she she was the, like, they were so, when we had the chickens, they'd be in the workshop with Martin, he'd be using saws and everything, they'd be running around. <laughs> Just funny. Um, we, we, we've got a head run, we're getting more, but I'm just waiting until the, the spring, because ours were all rescue. And when they came to us, they were uh, 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 bald. I, I mean, I can tell you a story about, right, we got chickens about five or six years ago and we got them from a rescue you know they came from a they were ex-battery farm chickens and they came now only want this 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 little sheep here i'll i'll keep talking while i do my wee sheep anyway um uh they were they were they were they were bald they did not a feather on them they, they looked so poorly um, anyway, I fed them porridge with honey for breakfast and blueberries. and blueberries and strawberries and <laughs> they soon perked up and they were beautiful. They were all fat and plump and lovely. But the story behind this is, I don't, I don't very often say this, but I'm a vegetarian and I'm a vegetarian because of those chickens. <laughs> because when they came, all I could see running around the garden was like chickens 
you know, like before you put it in the oven, no feathers, nothing. Just it, it, exactly it, it, like. <laughs> Martin's saying that's exactly what they look like. And we got them, I think, in about the August. And by the October, I was a vegetarian and I've never eaten meat since. And I don't know why. I just think of those chickens. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> and Martin's a vegetarian as well. And, and can I just say, Martin was the biggest meat eater you could ever have met. I mean, Martin didn't think it was man food if you, you know, if you gave him a baked potato. <laughs> but here we are, we, you know, we don't eat meat, but our children eat meat. I mean, it's not for us to foist our opinions onto them, but it's just that the chickens were the reason why Martin and I are vegetarians. <laughs> they were, they were, they were, and they were so loved. But what happened to them all was we had a goshawk in the area and he stole a few. And then we had one just, death from old age and then we had Vanessa Lorraine and she outlasted the the lot of them I mean there was JJ Junior they all had names the kids got to name them so um they all had different names uh, there was Arabella Baldbum <laughs> I mean they all had silly names but anyway uh, Vanessa was the last one and she um she was around for so long she was like part of the family she was like a like a pet she was like a dog I mean she you just she went missing. Uh, it was just before my daughter's wedding. We did my daughter's wedding in our garden. Um, we had a big garden party, and um, it was just before the garden party, we were putting up a pergola in the garden. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm too, doing too much talking and not enough action tonight. Um, yeah, so we were putting up a pergola, and the day the pergola was, Martin was out there with chainsaws, and there was all these guys working in the garden, and. Um, uh, she she came she'd been missing and she came back and she was never right after that in fact we put her in a run because she was all our chickens were free range and we put her in a run because she was so flighty and then she seemed to calm down so we let her back out and she went missing again and um my my oldest daughter thinks she had some kind of dementia <laughs> she just kept wandering off and couldn't find her way home but the thing is, because we live on farmland, a, a fox probably had a nice, maybe with, <laughs> yeah, maybe. But the thing about it is, is the cubs would maybe want something to eat. It was maybe a mum looking for some food. So I, I always like to think Vanessa went and <laughs> fed something else. So you can see what I'm doing here as I'm doing all this talking. I'm, all I'm doing is I'm getting the um, black cherry ink and I'm going over everything. All the little pieces and parts, they all link. So... For example, this one here is, uh, I have to keep looking at them. Uh, it's not this, it's, um, it's not that one. I just, I'm just lining them all up. Sorry, it's taking me. I'm doing so much talking and not enough action. And it is really late now as well. Martin's right, it's midnight, past midnight again. I, I don't sleep very well, so I don't really care, but Martin likes his bobos. <laughs> I can't actually find it right now. Oh my goodness. Here. Is it this one? Or is it this way? I, yeah, I think it's that way. Um, this is the thing. You've got to remember all the little pieces and parts for the second time round. Once you've stamped on the big ones, it's just like a kind of jigsaw after that, getting them all into this sort of... I don't think that is, is it? Oh, well, we'll, 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 we'll know in a minute. <laughs> Yeah, that looks about right. There's something not so good here, so I'm just going to flip this round and use just this this part here to do. So I'm only using this part here, the stamp, to just do something like that there. Um, this part, this branch is like now stuck out in the middle of nowhere because of the way I've applied it. So we'll do something like that. And that's going to carry over onto the. Uh, I'm just using these parts if I'm wanting to kind of continue it along. These are just this one, this one going this way, this one going this way, this one going this way, and there is a tiny little bud. Um, it's a little single one. Um, uh, until I find it. Do you know what? I had it in my hand a minute ago. Here it is. 
This little bud is quite good for doing, you know, just like all kind of add-ons if you want to make it trail. Like, I mean, I'm already ma imagining a dresser with this running down it and um, lots of different things happening in it. And I know as well what I was going to say was this here is a, is a state of, it's a kind of case of if you don't like i mean i've done mine sort of quite bohemian twelve. um but if you're wanting more muted colors then you know the the thing about it is is just change up the colors i've used just change them for all the lighter colors all the paler colors and and use a stays on doing loads of different colors uh -huh, and um or iod ink if you if you use iod um i just just stays on because it's easier for me to get here but um but IOD do loads of different colours as well, so you can use um, whatever you like to stamp over the top of it, or maybe you just want black at the end of the day. I mean, that's up to you. Um, I'm looking for the cow, which I thought was the camel. No, it wasn't a camel, I can't remember. What is that? It wasn't a rabbit. <laughs> I've done the sheet. I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to just stamp quickly around there because then I'm going to show you about the blue highlighting that I've done. And uh, I think we'll probably call it quits and let it dry, all dry till tomorrow. And then we'll get on to the top. And um, I think I am going to put some handles above here as well. I've got some pink handles that I've had in my stash for about three years. And you've no idea how many times I've tried to put it on furniture and they don't work. So, But I think they might work for this one. Um, so I'll get on and do this. and. Uh, that's that. So the next, the accent colour that I'm going to use to highlight everything off is Provence. It's all works together with, with the duck egg and this and the blue and the, uh, sorry, the purple and the pinks. Um, they all work. Uh, so this is the one I'm going to be using. And all I'm doing with this is think, not quite the palette now scraping, but more a sort of waxy, how you're going to apply it. So you can apply it with a brush that my finger there, um, to where you want it to go and then just rub it in and give it a bit of highlight. Now it's not for everywhere. Now Matt, I've done the other side and as we were doing it, Martin was saying this is probably the kind of area where people go, oh I would be scared of ruining it. And what I was saying to Martin is what my top tip is. What I generally do when I've finished a piece is I pick the colour and I pick, say, I would do up here because there's no, there's no design around there and I could just do this. And so, first of all, I'm looking to see, does the colour work with the design? Yes, it does. Right, so I know that much. Good. And then what I'll do is I'll pick a, pit, a part beside it enough to give me an idea of where I'm going. So I would maybe do here and I'll try that and then what up here and then I would stop and I would look at it and go because these aren't anything that you couldn't you know I'm just going to wipe my, my fingers spray my fingers or something because I'm getting them um, I'm getting ink onto my paintwork but but these these are areas that it would be okay to do to try a little on because you could easily paint those back in so this is what I did over the other side and this is what I generally do. I either pick a piece on the side if there's a pattern on the side or I just do the, I do that little test and that's how I know if that's, because what these kind of things do is they make your furniture have, A, have a bit of a lift, but they also um, kind of make it all, give it a little bit, tiny bit of interest. I mean, and that's what, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to achieve an, a, like a real arty finish, not, you know, flat paint. You're wanting plenty of texture. You, you're wanting to be able to, you know, like highlight everything. And this is a good way of doing it. Now, once I'd kind of put these blue parts on, I then, on each one of this kind of scenes, I picked a tiny little part. So in here, I'm going to do the rose. And I'm going to do the little chicks back up here. I'm going to do the sheep's kind of forehead. And then just hang on, my brush is separating. I was just saying to Martin, I need to I'm across the board buy new brushes. They're all seeming to die all at once. And I've got so many, but I feel like I'm always rattling through to find the same ones all the time. And I, I just need to get some. So, as well as a new living room carpet now that I've been painting. <laughs> <laughs> 
if you think you if you think Martin should get me a new living carpet <laughs> in, in April, just you know, leave a comment below. <laughs> so there, yeah, a little bit of that and a little bit there and a wee bit there. This is just a tiny little accent. You're not picking out loads of parts. It's just a little bit of just a little bit of extra that pulls all the colours together. Um, that's all I'm doing. I'm just whizzing round, picking out all my little parts. Now we're not going to get to doing the top um, tonight, but tomorrow when I'm feeling fresher, because I'm starting to flag now, um, I will, you know, we'll get onto that. It's been crazy with me being sick. I, I, I've had pain and mountain to achieve, and I've been kind of trying to do all that first before I started to do sort of YouTube stuff. So. And probably this video will, will be out after our video because I've said how, you know, I've been ill and things, but there'll be one before it that isn't going to see this because I can't show anybody this right now until um, I just realised that. Didn't think of that, man, did we? Right, so back to the accents around the edges. I picked out, and that's a bit much, I picked out all my blues and... I'm just going to quickly whiz round and not go crazy. I know it's difficult for me, but just enough where I think it might need it. And I'm just kind of like giving it a little bit of a huge. Um, you can show them the other side, Martin, and then that way they get an idea of where I'm going with this. And you'll also see there as well, which I'm going to show you in a minute, how I put some drips on the piece. Um, I decided that some areas you can pick out and you can really kind of go to town on the blue, like I'm wanting a bit more blue on the leg. So I did that and there's a, quite a lot of blue in the inside leg or the other side. So um, I think pretty much that's that for this. And you just apply it and if you don't want to use your finger to smooth it out, you could um, probably use a brush. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think if the same effect would work because you're kind of smearing. Yeah, I guess you could. You, you could dry brush it out if this is was you didn't want to use your fingers. Um, there. Now, I think we are done with this. Now, the next thing I did was I got the same paint and I just put loads of water in it from a water spray. And then I did an occasional drip. And this is optional. I repeat, this is optional. So I just picked apart. Oh, the paint's not running. Oh, dearie me. That was start. I'm painting the top. Let's start again. You know, it worked perfectly. So I want to catch that. But I want it to look like a drip. Um, maybe here. Now it's up to you what you do. You can either catch your drip and pull it back up, or you can wipe it with a cloth. So I want one here. I'm catching it. But as I said, these are optional. This is just the look I'm kind of going for. Um, so how I'm doing this is just making sure that I've got enough paint, watery paint on my brush. If you don't want to catch with your paintbrush, you can do this and just catch it and kind of rub it back up the way. Um, one that likes kind of like... Uh, so drip, drip, drip. And I think maybe that might be enough for the dripping i like a drip but you can over drip as well i mean you don't want over drip i want to carry on down there so i think we're golden i think we're kind of good now the last thing i did was i got the cherry um just checking this is reasonably dry i got the cherry um stays on and i just rubbed it along here. I want to try and get outside edges and the inside edges like that and um, that just kind of gives a bit more of a highlight across there as well. Yeah. 
you have to be kind of careful that it doesn't touch up against anything else or you're going to have to repaint it in. Ask me how I know that. There we go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, that's it for tonight. And I'll be back tomorrow and we'll get this bad boy finished. You can do it up your edges like that as well if you, you know, if you feel like you're feeling like you want a bit of a, a bit of a joy in your life. Okay, done for tonight. Okay, so new day, we're on to the top. The top had one coat of the purple. That's why you can see all the streaks because it was just one light coat. You just, I just wanted one light coat in this and I deliberated when I went to bed last night and it was already late enough um, what to do with the top, but I think I've decided. The very lightest, really light, dusky pink which was made from the darker I just put the rest of that into the dusky pink so I wasn't wasting paint so I'm going to pop that down there uh, for this step I'll throw that down there as well you need something to apply the paint to the top a silicon scraper works best you can use you know like the kitchen scrapers they're really cheap and effective you don't need a fancy blade uh, I would say this is a little bit too heavy a little bit too scrapey scratchy for the top so all I'm going to do is I'm literally going to do bold move, I know, something like this and see if I've got enough and I'm just going to work it across the top of my table, just trowel it on and I might need to make up, mix up some more which would be ah, terrible if I did. Um, now you've got a bit of set up time for this. I'm going to be stamping into my piece uh, with the stamps. I don't want it to go too near the edge because I don't want it to start running off it um, with the stamp. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of evenness like this. I'm not bothered. I'm looking for interest. Now, if you've ever done this look before, you're not going to get a clear, crisp image. That's never going to happen for you with this. It's just about the texture, to be honest with you. And by putting the coat of the purple underneath when I stamp in it, it should go through so this just takes a little bit of time just getting it and once I've kind of got it onto everywhere I'll smooth it out as best I can but I'm just kind of getting it up to the up to the edges whoopsie so I'll tell you what I'll do off camera I'll just go and do this just so I can get it all on and then we will come back and it's going to need about five minutes you're going to have to when you first start playing with paint like this, you're going to have to kind of decide what your sort of timings are. Now, I've got a log burning fire in here, so I have a... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like Vesuvius is mounting in here. It's so hot. I've went from the sublime to the ridiculous. I'm normally freezing. Now I'm roasting. Anyway, I'll get on and I'll cover this whole table, smooth it out a bit, and then we'll see if it's ready to actually stamp right now because I don't want to leave it that it doesn't leave an impression and it gets too stiff, so... Um, I'll just keep going on and doing this. I'm working really quickly because it's really hot in here and my paint is drying really fast. So all I'm doing is the same thing that you do with stamps. I'm just embedding it into it. Now there's some parts thinner, which means you won't get much detail. And some of it is a bit thicker. And hopefully when it dries, it should leave me quite a good sort of texture. I'm just filling it out with these big roosters first and then I'll go back with the florals in a minute. I think what I'll do, which might be a wise move, is I might put a little bit of clear wax on the top and then a little bit of dark wax so that it sits in. That's all my roosters. I'm going to move on to my florals next. Did you just hold that? I've got an assistant to Dee Dee's holding my stamps. I think maybe, if I'm really honest, my paint could have been done with being slightly thicker, but. Uh, I'm not too bothered about that. It's just to give it a 
bit of something extra really and you won't really can tell until something goes over the top of it what we got there Daisy I'll take the other chicken but I'm just going round you can see what I'm doing I'm just picking the stamps at random seeing where I haven't been just putting some stamps in And I'm just making a sort of random pattern. Um, what next, Daisy? What we have? Right, so I'll get on and do this. Okay, so while the top's drying, because we have to go back in with another colour to sit in the recesses, because I've decided I'm going to put a colour on it. Martin was saying, it's not, sorry for the last bit of filming, it doesn't really translate in this sort of light to see what you're doing but once you put another color in it it'll all sit in and it'll make sense now i absolutely love this the way it is but what i think it actually needs if i stand back from it i think it needs a just a little bit of a lighter color just to let the eye rest a little bit it's quite a lot um of the same sort of shade so all i'm using is which is old ochre which is as nearest you're going to get from me for white and as you can see i've got my palette knife because i put the texture in here it's working out a treat. Oh, I've got shaky hands today. Um, and I'm just doing here and there just to give it, it's just to break it up slightly. I'm not going mad and covering it in white. It's not, that's not what I'm doing. Um, it's just because these are all from the same sort of palette. And I think it looks a little bit like, uh, just a little bit too maybe all the same thing. I'm going to do maybe a longer run of white down here. Um, that kind of also gives it a dimension of some of the paint work. The toile is chipped off and um, there was white paint on underneath it, which I think kind of gives it another bit of a look if, you, if that's what you're going for. You don't have to do this part. I just feel that it needs it. Um, I just want tiny touches, so I'm not going crazy here. Well, maybe I am. <laughs> right. Okay, I think that is pretty much what I think I'm going to do on this side that's enough I've put it down this leg here I've got, not got much up the top let me just kind of rectify there and I'm just going to move over do the middle part and do that with the same little touches of white but you get the idea it's, it's just spread spread them out but don't have it looking like it's a leopard you know oh and Matt is whispering to me handles handles right okay so this is what I think about pieces like this I have sold them without handles because these are the handles really that these are the locks but i think it needs something else and i think if people are paying for a whole custom piece a really swanky piece of furniture that it deserves something more now the handles i've got are marble i've had these in my stash forever forever man i'll <laughs> tell you and every so often i go oh the pink handles the pink handles but they never work but this time round, i think i've managed to hit home and i'm going to put them on sort of like that as opposed to i can't remember i can't work out what way anyway Martin's going to put these on for me just above these handles here and I think that gives it just an extra piece but if you're doing a piece like this and it's vintage and you've gone over your handles and you're happy with it you don't have to it's just something I quite often do I think I always think give them a little bit of something extra and it's nice when you photograph your work and you see something even more interesting in what you can see so Good save, save Martin for shouting handles, handles. He's not got an indoor voice either. You know, if he's in a shop, I go, Martin. <laughs> so I'm going to get onto the white. We'll put these handles on and by then we can finish off the top and then it's down to ceiling. In here, I've got some old ochre and I've probably two parts water to one part paint. It's quite runny. Um, now the trick with this is I'm just going to work in small sections. So I'm going to start here and just do little parts at a time. Now I've got a soft cloth. You don't want a cloth that's going to leave texture in your piece. So something sort of cotton um, and just kind of start sort of. It'll become apparent the more there is. Just don't want it running off the sides right now because my sides and everything are all done. And it should hopefully, maybe my paint's a little bit thick. 
settle in the, the pattern. But it doesn't really look like it. Well, there's a part there. Um, yeah, it is going to. So I'm just going to work my way along this piece now and just, um, just do small sections at a time. And at the end of it all, we should have a reasonably good texture. I think probably the wiping strategy worked a little bit better. So I'll get on and do this and then we'll be nearly ready for sealing. We still haven't got the handles on, but I'm going to get them on next. Okay, so what I've done is I'm, I've sealed the piece now. I used French Chic Sealer and I just applied it with a sponge. Um, it's a two good coats. Uh, Martin's put the handles on and it's finished and we'll take it over to the studio and we'll do the sort of final staging piece there. Can I just say about the top? I think at first I was a little bit disappointed because it wasn't as much relief, but I think the problem was I'm not used to working with so much heat. The quicker I was applying the paint, I mean, if I did this over in the studio, it would still be damp in about a fortnight, but it was just drying up too quickly. But I think when I look at the top, the top has came out really nice. Um, it has got the texture in some areas, the dark purples coming coming through. It's got the white. Um, I really like it. It's 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 come out really nice. So I'm pleased with it. If I hadn't liked it, I think I would have just trailed on more paint and did it again. But I'd kind of committed to the white at that point. But then the more I looked at it and the more I saw the kind of dark purple coming through, I thought, that's nice. I really like it. So sometimes your little mishaps can be, you know, work in your favour. Happy little accidents. That's what Bob Ross <laughs> said. Uh, so we'll get this over to the stable. Finished. Ta-da. The stamp, the stamp is awesome. I think it, you pronounce it, it's French, I think you pronounce it um, La Campagne, but it could be La Campagne. I'm not entirely sure, so we'll know when the release comes out whether I'm right or wrong. Um, it wasn't difficult to do, the distressy sort of colours underneath, um, stamped, painted, restamped, and new handles. Tried to do a kind of texture on the top, but it was so hot in the house but I decided that I liked it so much anyway so I just kept it the way it was I will try and do that another day and show you properly but it would have to be now in the spring when it's um I can do it over here where it, where it what the paint won't set up as quickly um like and share and um follow us and um subscribe that's the word <laughs> I'm talking Martin just told me what to say and I completely forgot <laughs> subscribe yes that's it if you haven't already subscribed and if you've watched this video and you love id projects well i've got quite a few um that i've done previously um i've been well for me by marley thank you so much for watching us and leave me a comment and tell me whether you're considering buying this stamp or not thanks Bye bye